In this fourth grade geometry standard, students will be asked to draw points, lines, line segments, rays, angles, many aspects that define shapes and angles. At this grade level, angles are a very new shape for students. They may have discussed angles a little bit when they are defining the difference between squares and triangles, maybe the special corners that squares have compared to other shapes like triangles or diamonds. But students haven't really paid a lot of attention to angle sizes yet or the special names for them. So there's a lot of new content in this fourth grade standard, which is why I like to work backwards through my scale and make sure students know what attributes to identify and have all the vocabulary in place. When I introduce this fourth grade scale, I start at level one. One and two are back pulling on background knowledge that students have about shapes and lines from previous grade levels. Working up to level three, which is the grade level expectation. I understand that there are different kinds of lines and angles and can draw them. Level four is for your advanced students and we'll get to that in a minute. The kind of question I would ask students at level one would be that they could identify different angles by name. I want to pull out just one aspect, some sub-skills of this standard and some vocabulary required for this standard so that I have something small to start with. So I would ask students to match the names of these angles with the picture. They can redraw the angles roughly on a piece of paper, match the names to each one, label them any way that you would like them to do it, just so you have a good idea of who is already familiar with this vocabulary and who isn't. This is a great pre-assessment for you to plan your lessons and activities and know which students already have a foundation of understanding angles. A level two question, I would ask students to define these vocabulary words, identifying different lines and arrangements of lines. You'll see the line ray, parallel lines, line segments, perpendicular lines, intersecting lines. Um, there is a point there, if you noticed. The point will not match any of the words below. So make sure that your students also notice that there's an extra picture that they don't need. I would ask students to maybe draw these again on their paper or maybe print out something with the shapes that they could label. See if they can correctly match each one. Use this as a mini quiz or a pre-assessment to see how much instruction you have to do and what kind of activities you'll do to reinforce the vocabulary for each shape. These two activities are a great introduction to the standard and help students become familiar with what the expectation will be. Starting out concretely with pictures of the shapes is much easier for them than giving them a bunch of words and asking them to draw the shapes. So now we're asking them to do something a little harder. The grade level expectation, they would have to know how to draw each shape and identify every vocabulary word. But we started simply in level one and two by giving them the picture first and letting them try to match the words that might sound familiar to them. This gives them kind of an easy warm up to build their confidence and give you some important information to plan. At level three, you'd give them more comprehension, more comprehensive questions about the different kinds of lines and angles. So here again, I have some of those vocabulary words. There's a lot of vocab in geometry, especially at this grade level. And there's a variety of ways that you'll be practicing these words throughout your lessons and planning. But if you have any students that have already mastered a lot of this content, you'll want to be ready to plan some special things just for them or some extension activities. Level three represents the grade level standard. Any of your students that can already pass the grade level standard at level three is ready to do something more challenging. 
So one way, there's a lot of ways you could extend these activities, but I ask students to draw multiple geometric figures to create one complex figure. At other grade levels, they have had to use make composite shapes and do some different things with geometry attributes. So you're going to ask them to do that again. One thing that I do is ask students to form one picture and use separate colors. So it would be really hard for me to pull out the line and the line segment and the parallel lines in a picture that's all full of different lines. So I ask students to use red to show me their line and their obtuse angle. And then they're going to put the red color together with yellow and make a yellow line segment and a yellow acute angle, maybe orange. That way I can pull out the shapes and make sure that they did it correctly and it also gives them a chance to be creative and put their pictures together in different ways. They may even have time to do multiple pictures. It depends how you want to extend the activity. The ray and the intersecting lines they would draw in green. Perpendicular lines and straight angles would be drawn in blue. Parallel lines and right angles would be drawn in purple. You could use this as a small group activity, a mini guided lesson, or an independent activity for your really high students. I always make sure that they've mastered the level three grade level standard first. If you would like an assessment that's already made for you to double check your students' mastery, you can visit my website at mrsleveledlearning.com. I have a freebies tab where you can download this exact scale for fourth grade geometry and also an assessment that you can give your students right away and see whether they're at level one, level two, level three, or level four mastery for this standard. I hope you enjoyed this example and it gave you some great ideas to use in your own classroom. Please visit my website and feel free to make any comments or questions that you have. I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great year.